Buenos días a todos. Quiero agradecerles por acompañarnos el día de hoy en este evento. Mi nombre es Alejandra Zapata y hago parte del equipo de Consejería Académica y Relaciones Internacionales de Colfuturo. Eh, hoy damos continuidad a nuestra jornada con las becas del 100% que tenemos gracias a nuestros convenios. Todos los días de enero y febrero intentaremos contar con la presencia de una universidad distinta. Los invito a seguirnos en nuestras redes sociales, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, para estar atentos a toda nuestra, a toda nuestra programación. El día de hoy nos acompaña Alexandra, quien es la representante de University of Exeter, quien nos estará contando más sobre la oferta académica que tienen disponible y sobre la beca Ayudar Scholarship, con la cual recibirán un apoyo estimado de 15 mil libras anuales en sus gastos de manutención hasta por dos años según la duración del programa. Esperamos que la información sea de gran utilidad para todos ustedes. Al final vamos a tener un espacio de preguntas y respuestas, entonces si a lo largo de la charla van teniendo dudas, la pueden ir escribiendo en el cajoncito de Q&A para que al final Alexandra les pueda dar respuestas. Eh, Alexandra, muy obrigada por aceptar nos, nos invitación hoy. Es un placer tener a vos con nosotros. Puedo comenzar. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to um, start speaking English, if that's okay. I'll try to speak slowly. I tend to speak a little bit fast. My name is Adriana Caton, and I'm the International Officer for the Americas at the, in, the University of Exeter which sits in the southwest of England. So what I'll be doing today, I'll be speaking a little bit about the university, about some details that you might already know or you might not know yet. And then I'll also speak about the opportunity for you to, besides getting the Cofuturo Award, which is one of our partners, we also have some another um, scholarship that you can apply for on top of the Cofuturo Awards. Um, so again, we are located in the southwest of England. So if you look here on the right corner, we're at the very bottom of England. And we have two main campuses, one in the city of Exeter and one in the city of Penryn, a smaller campus in the city of Penryn. Um, like I said, this is our Streatham campus. This is in the city of Exeter which is one of the major cities in the southwest of England. It's a Roman city, so it has a lot of history. Um, and we have actually two campuses um, in, in Exeter. This is the main campus. Most of the classes, most of the subject areas happen in the Streatham campus. But we also have a smaller campus that concentrates our medical school and also our school of education called St. Luke's Campus, which is in this beautiful, historic, palace-like building. And I know a lot of times, you know, when you look at the websites, when you do a Google search, you see a lot of these, you know, yeah, kind of Photoshopped photos. So I wanted to show you, share a little bit of my personal archives and show you how it really looks like here in Exeter. That's me and my son in the middle, my son, Luca. And we're standing in front of this beautiful F Exeter Cathedral, which is one of the main cathedrals in England. Um, it, it has beautiful features inside, and it's just a very touristic part of, of the city, of this Roman city, with lots of um, opportunities for activities, physical activities. Um, there is the quay, we call the quay, where, where you see that that's my bike there. I went cycling to the quay and had a nice cup of coffee. And what you can also do is hire some kayaks and go cycling down or kayaking down the river towards the ocean. Um, we sit very close to beaches and we'll, we'll show you, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. We, we are um, surrounded by the coast of the Southwest, very close to, to um, by train or by bike, or you can even walk depending on where you live. Um, and at the bottom, you can see that the city is quite hilly. So one of the things that our students say about Exeter and Streatham campus is that, you know, you go up and down the hills. I don't think of England of having lots of hills, but we do have, um, you know, a, quite a, a difference of like mountains and, and coming down into the sea level. 
And that's my son overlooking and went for a nice walk around the city of Exeter. There is um, a, a path for 12 miles that circulates into the, the town and around the city. So you can see beautiful sights of the city. And that's just one of the many things that the students have access to and do on, on their spare time. And down further in Penryn, as I mentioned, there is a smaller campus. And it's almost like a little gem of the University of Exeter. Um, it's uh, surrounded, again, by nature and beaches, and you have access to, to river sports and, you know, uh, stand up paddling and windsurfing, kite surfing. Um, so, and, and it's also a hub for environment and sustainability. Uh, we have the Environment and Sustainability Institute, which um, is one of the main attractions for students who want to study in that area. And again, it's, it's set, the photos, the official photos have this little green flag award, which literally means for the past 11 years, the University of Exeter has won a green flag for, for having um, green spaces in their campus. And we are actually a registered um, botanical garden. So there are plants and beautiful spaces, oasises that you can go and relax. And it just makes it for a really amazing experience as a student. And, you know, when we look at um, where Exeter is compared to London, a lot of people want to, you know, if we go back to my map, in, in the original map, you can see that London's here on the southeast and we are straight to the southwest. But then how long does it actually take to get from London when you land at the airport, probably Heathrow Airport, you will land. And how long does it get to take to get to Exeter and then further down into Cornwall to our Penn Rin campus? So I did a little simulation. I went on Google Maps this morning and I, I did a printout of how it, how long it would take to get from your Salt Cathedral there near Bogota, for those that live in Bogota and know the region, down to where like the coffee plantation. So if I was a tourist, I would probably do this route. And it takes about three hours in the car, you know, with a little bit of traffic here and there. So this is for you to have an idea, um, you know, in the length of time that you're in the car for you to travel, compared to when you're at Heathrow Airport, and driving down to Exeter or taking a bus down to Exeter. Um, so actually driving is a bit slower than taking the train. So the student's favorite mode of transportation, unless you hire a car and you're traveling around the country on the weekend on a road trip or something like that, most students will, will take the train down to Exeter. Um, but just so you have an idea of distances, um, you know, driving down to and from London takes about three hours. And then I did a little simulation of how it would be like if you took a train this morning from Paddington Station in London. Um, it, you could take the fast train, which is, there's only four stops in between Exeter and Paddington Station. And you can get to Exeter St. David's, which is the main central station in two hours and nine minutes. And then if you wanted to travel all the way down to our other campus. It's a bit further away. And it, you could take a, a, a fast train as well, but it has a little bit more stops down to the main town down in Cornwall called Truro, which we do have some affiliations with the medical school as well in the city of Truro. And then you have to switch trains and go one stop to Penryn. So that's what our students would do if they landed in Heathrow, okay? So let me talk a little bit about the history of Exeter. I'm not going to go into too much detail because there's a lot to talk about. I'm, I'm going to spend a lot of time if I was going to talk about every little thing. But just so you have an idea, this it started as a school of arts, actually, in, in the Exeter Streatham campus. And in 1855, and 100 years after that, it was um, received as a full university status. So we gained lots of lots of um, new disciplines and colleges. And then by 1955, the Queen inau inaugurated the university as, as a full university status. And ever since then, we just kept adding more and more and more institutes, 
Um, you know, then we acquired the St. Luke campus, joined the university. And then in 2012, we became part of the Russell Group University. I don't know if you've heard of this, but it's, it's almost comparable to the Ivy League in the United States, which are universities in the UK, which are specialized in research and known for their research. And then in a bit later, we were named um, University of the Year by the Sunday Times, and then ranked top 100 university for the first time in the world. Um, more recently, we had an addition to our Stratham campus, which is the Living System Institute, which is an amazing institute that, again, biology mixed with mathematics, mixed with chemistry, and they're all working together in this amazing research, groundbreaking research. And um, again, going along the lines of our environment um, consciousness and the, the aim that the University of Exeter has to really tackle and help the students look forward to tackling climate change, um, we won the Queen's um, Prize for our research in plastic pollution. So there's, again, a lot of work being done across the university to tackle, um, you know, saving our planet and, and making our lives more carbon neutral. And, you know, so why is the University of Exeter a good choice for Colombians? Why, why would you as a Colombian student come here? But in general, for, if you're coming to the UK compared to other countries, um, you might already know this, um, but it's a one year master's program, okay? Or a three to four year PhD program. And you can now, according to government um, immigration rules, you can stay up to two years after you complete um, your under your new undergraduate. Um, um, sorry, you, it, once you complete your degree and you graduate, there's a new graduate immigration route which allows you to stay and work in the UK for two years if you're studying a master's degree or three years if you're studying a PhD. And you, all you have to do is just apply for this new visa and then you continue staying in the country and you have an opportunity to stay and work for a few more years after you finish your degree. And then the other reasons you, you, the, Colum the Columbians should come to the University of Exeter is that again, we are ranked currently for 2022, um, top 100 university under the Times Higher Education ranking and also the QS World University rankings. And again, I met, as I mentioned, all the research that we do, 98% of the research is world leading, meaning that we are at the forefront of amazing things that we're discovering. We did a lot of work with the coronavirus research, and also we were involved with the COP26 summit in Glasgow. Five of our academics were sent to lead on the conversations that happened there about the future of climate change. And, you know, um, other themes that we are really known for our research, besides climate and environment, marine biology, uh, we're also known for engineering and defense and security, like the research when it comes to military and justice, law. Um, a lot of medical um, research is in the far forefront for dementia, diabetes, and old age, and you know, making sure that there are elderly people are um, you know, as healthy as they could possibly be for as long as possible. And we also, in the business side, we are trying to do a lot of research on, on the future of work and also how that integrates with the environment in, a, in, a, you know, in an intelligent, realistic way. And as you can see from the last 10 years, from 2012, out of all the Russell Group universities, we have the highest growth in research, research capacity. So you, this means for a master's student that you know that your mentors, that your tutors are literally at the forefront of everything, um, you know, world leading in that field, in their fields. The other, the other side of, um, you know, the quality of research is the quality of teaching. So the last, um, teaching Excellence Framework, the TEF, as we call here, it's, it's, a, it's a voluntary um, participation for universities in the UK and where we literally put ourselves in the line to, to see how um, the students feel our teaching is. And the last round, we were rated gold 
by our students. So this, this is excellent. We not only have the excellence of research, but we also counterbalance that with the excellence of our teaching. And you know that just shows on the completion rates of the students, and also you know ninety percent of the graduates are you know they either continue studying or they um, start employment after they they graduate. And we're consistently in within the UK, we're top fifteen in the in the UK league tables for across all subjects. And. Um, Talking a little bit more about the structure of the university and how our colleges are broken down, we have six main colleges. We have the engineering, math and physical science, the humanities, um, life and environmental sciences, social sciences, international studies, the business school, and then the school of medicine as well. Um, so I'm just going to let you take a you know a look. I'm not going to read out this list, but you know, these are the, the main subject areas. And obviously there is lots of unique courses and modules that happen within each one. But these are just the major, the major themes um, across the colleges that, that I just listed before. Um, okay, so entry requirements and equivalency for Columbia, okay? so. You might already know this. I'm sorry if you already received your offer, that if you already applied, but there is still time to apply. I think it's important to say that there's still time to apply. We uh, tend to process our uh, postgraduate taught applications within a two week window. Uh, for research degrees, it takes a little bit longer, but you know, if you still would like to apply to Exeter, there's still time. And I'll give you my email at the end of this and you can reach out to me and I'll try to make sure that your application gets prioritized because I, I know that with Popo Futuro, you will have, um, you know, you will have a deadline for that. So, you know, in terms of a typical offer, so you need the equivalent of a, a two one and some subjects you need a two two. So we would probably ask for a four out of five in your licenciado. Okay, and then, um, um, and like I said, some master's degree, they, they allow you to have a little bit less of a 3.5, but we, we do need the English requirements, which I'll talk to the next screen. For research courses, it's a little bit more um, complicated in the process. It takes a little bit longer for you to plan yourself. You need to have a research proposal. Um, so, you know, if you need support with that, I can talk to you, you know, through email more individually if you need, um, if you would like to apply for either a master's of research, which is a two year master's degree only doing research, or a bit longer degrees like the MPhil or the PhD. Okay. And like I said, for the English language, this is all on our website. Um, most of the courses, the all the you know, except law or maybe medicine, we ex we need a 6.5 overall on on the IELTS, um, and then not no less than six in each of the sections of speaking, reading, writing, and listening. Um, and then the TOEFL, we accept TOEFL, uh, Pearson, and then the CELT as well. So let me talk a little bit more specifically about the IUDAR side of our the opportunities for Cofuturo applicants. And it's it's actually a donor that partnered with us. And it's a very kind donor who wants to give back to Colombia. So it's a Colombian donor that lives here in the UK. And they they want to, to help Colombian students go back to, to Colombia and be the best that they can be. So they the way that they found that they want to support that is um, paying for a, a stipend, for a living allowance, whilst you are studying here with us. So basically, um, all the Colombians will have the, the opportunity to apply for the Ayudar scholarship. And this is a process that happens after you have, um, you know, confirmed that you received the Kofutoro award. And we will, it's an interview process where you will be able to have the opportunity to say what you would you do with your degree back in Colombia. So it's it's you know we will contact you directly for you and be inviting you for this interview. And um, you know, like I said, it's a combined award that 
you will, you will cover the tuition with Futuro and also um, a living allowance for you to be able to sustain yourself both here in the UK. I apologize, I have an itchy throat. <clears throat> so how to apply for this? So like I said, you need to apply for Exeter first and receive an offer from us, <clears throat> whether it's a um, conditional or unconditional offer, and then um, submit your, your scholarship application to Kofutoro by the 28th of Feb. So <clears throat> if you apply this week or by the beginning of February, you will probably have an answer by mid-February and then you'll have time to apply for Kofu Tutoro. I wouldn't leave um, too much later than that. I wouldn't apply past mid-February to Exeter because it might not have a turnaround that quickly. If you need help with that, again, you'll have my contact now. Try to get your application prioritized. Um, um, okay, so now we have um, Eliana who is a lovely, lovely uh, Master's of Research student down in Cornwall. And she was the recipient of the Ayudara scholarship a few years ago. And she has a few tips for you. So I'm hoping that this works. Uh, can you let me know in the chat if this, if you cannot hear the sound? But she has a few tips. It's, it's just a quick video, okay? So here we go. Having the Ayudara Scholarship on top of the Kofutura Award has been essential for me. So I'm utterly grateful with the donors and with the university and of course with Kofutura as well for providing this opportunity for me. And I want others to be able to come and enjoy this wonderful um, experience as well. So the last piece of advice that I will give to you um, is simply prepare for the interview, <laughs> have your mind clear and um, express yourself in the better way so that you can be understood and you can demonstrate why what you will be doing will impact Colombia positively and why all the things that you learn and the skills that you get um, with, will help others and not just you, so that the investment that they do in you is worth it. That's <clears throat> all they want to know, so prepare. Um, that's my advice um, in whatever field you study, just prepare and have confidence in yourself because you can do it. Okay, <laughs> hopefully you were able to hear that and um, hopefully that was some inspiration for you for, from um, Eliana to apply for the Ayudar scholarship. And, but next, I also wanted to talk about the Global Excellence Scholarship for postgraduate um, taught masters. Um, so at the same time that you will have the opportunity to, to get the Ayudar award, you can also apply for a Global Excellence Scholarship. And Global Excellence, you're going to be, it's a bit different, it's more competitive. You're going to be competing with international students from all over the world. But we give a lot of these awards. So, you know, maybe we will award sometimes 30, 40 international students. So you have a good chance that you will at least get, you know, either a 5,000 um, pound scholarship or 10 or even a, a range of a, a full scho um, scholarship for that, um, you know, to be able to help you with your um, living allowance here in 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 the U in the UK, whilst through here. And these global excellence scholarships they're open until the twenty second of April for you to apply. So, um, like I said, you can you know try the Ayudar, and if that doesn't happen for you, you still have the opportunity to get some more financial help. OK, um, and then continuing um, a bit more about the university and why it's a great choice for you. Um, I mean, if you like sports, we were voted former uh, sports 
you know, we were former Sports University of the Year. Um, um, you know, many times we were voted that, and we are always uh, top ten in the UK for you know in the in the leagues of sports in any sports anything that you can imagine, and we have so many clubs, sports clubs, and societies that you can involve get involved. Uh, we even have here in the southwest we have surfing. <laughs> we have a surfing society because again we have so many beaches and we have the, the the surfing beaches. The best surfing beaches in the UK are located not that far away from us, about an hour away um, over to the the west coast of of Devon and Cornwall. And um, it's just a, an amazing place to come. You know you have so many different things that you can get involved there's a, a really vibrant international student um, community um there's a latin american community and just so you have a, a bit of a of a sense of numbers for colombians in in exeter so currently registered here in exeter there's 24 um 24 Col uh, colombians studying so um you know they're split between undergraduate and phd and masters um, you know, if from 2019 until now, we've also had um, 10 masters graduate. Um, so in, in probably most of them, we had co-futuro funding on top of that. So it's really nice to see that there's already some a cohort of Colombians back in Colombia after this wonderful experience, or some of them might be working here in the UK through the graduate route. Um, international students, we have just under 7,000. Um, and then total students between all campuses, we have around um, 27,000 students um, at the university. So it's a large campus university. And again, um, not just Streatham campus, we also have St. Luke's and um, the campus down in Cornwall. And we have the best facilities. Uh, we invested so much money. If you like going to the gym, if you want to try a new sport, we have anything that you can imagine you can get involved um even that that harry potter um quidditch we have that as well um actually jake and roland if you're a harry potter fan jake and roland actually studied her undergraduate degree here at exeter so she's she lived here for a few years of her life which and influenced the, the you know obviously with her fame and that influenced the you know the students um a lot to, to influence them to come to exeter especially the uk students that are um really uh, fans of harry potter and in the main forum where you have the library where you have you know shops and you have a bar you also have the career zone it's right in the smack of the middle of the university and you can go in and out of the careers center anytime that you need to get um you know maybe uh, advice on finding some work experience on you know writing your personal statement we, we do training with students and seminars and then at the end when you graduate we will support you the careers team will support you for the rest of your life so if you need any kind of um, as an alumni you will have the careers um, support for for the rest of your life we run careers fairs with all kinds of employers, as you can see, these are some examples. Um, and and then, you know, one of the main things that I like to talk about, besides living here um, and having great accommodation, like we have great accommodation options, we have on campus, off campus. Um, you know, like I said, the town, uh, the university sits almost like, you know, on top of the town, and then you walk down 14, 15 minutes. Um, into the, the the center of town um, and there's accommodation that is in the campus or just outside the campus and there's you know if once you, you get to that point of selecting where you're going to live um, the, the accommodation team is amazing they'll be able to guide you through and, and see what the best option is for you um, international students are guaranteed accommodation in their first year so you will be, um, if you apply on time, which I think it's by 4th of April, um, you will be able to get accommodation guaranteed on campus. Um, and also Cornwall, the same thing. We have lots of, um, you know, international student accommodations and other accommodation options down in Cornwall. But my favorite part about 
um, living and working for the University of Exeter, living in, in this region, is the access to nature. So if you are the kind of person that you like to go hiking, you like to go cycling, you like to have nature at your fingertips, um, this is the right university for you. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell the person that loves, you know, having a buzzy city and and lots of, you know, noise and and, you know, people everywhere all the time. This is not how Exeter is. It's not it's not a, it's not it's a city that has everything that you need. It has shops, it has a cinema, it has theater. We have a theater actually on campus. Um, lots of cultural activities. We have a museum in town, uh, but we are very active. We are very sporty. We and we do lots of things outdoors. We like even in the rain, <laughs> even you're thinking, why would I go outside if it's cold? But you'd be surprised. Like it's not as bad as people say, especially down here in the south. I mean, if you maybe if you go north, like in Scotland or north of England, yes, it is colder. It, it snows here. We rarely see snow. Um, so if you're looking forward for snow, I can't guarantee snow. I think I've seen snow maybe twice since I lived here in Exeter in the last in the last four years. Um, but you know we have lots of activities that you can do on the weekend. You can hop on the train and you can go go down um, to Smith Beach. Uh, you can go hiking on Dartmoor National Park. And I mean, I did, these are some more of my photos, my personal archives. So these are actually, you know, photos that I took myself. And, you know, this is just down the road from my house, about five, 10 minute walk. And that's the River X. And that's a beach uh, called Dawlish and Butterly Salton. And that's Exmouth Beach, but they have um, an amazing um, um, competition for kite surfing because there's lots of wind. And then these are some other beaches of the area. And it's just, you know, students go down to Exmouth or Sidmouth all the time where you can, you know, relax on the beach and go for walks. And th this is the other side. This is the mountains area. This is um, um, Dartmoor National Park where me and my family go exploring a lot. There's a lot of pubs that you can go to that are kind of, you know, in secret places that you can find. And it's just honestly a really amazing quality of life. So if you love nature, you will have plenty of it if you come here as a student. So muchas gracias. Thank you so much for listening. And again, this is um, my own photo. This is an, uh, a stone circle in Dartmoor National Park. Um, there are many, many um, of these stone circles, very similar from the same time, Bronze Age, like Stonehenge. But we have smaller versions of it all across. So there's so much exploring to do. And, you know, I'm sure that you won't be disappointed if you decide to come to Exeter. And thank you so much for listening again. I want to stop sharing my screen now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Question. Adriana, thank you so much. Yes, I'm yes. going to read <laughs> some questions that we have. Uh, first of all, and someone asked, good morning, I'm interested in applying for one of your arts masters, but I've consulted entry requirements, but I don't need the 2.1 honors degree. But through, you say practical and professional experience may be taken as a constitution, the equivalent of degree qualification. I would like to know if I can apply anyway. Okay, oh, so in these cases, um, I would, it, the admissions team, so we have a central admissions team that makes the decision. So um, what I always say is that if you feel like you um, meet the 2-2 requirement, I would apply anyway. And yes, if you have work experience, we do take that into consideration as well. Um, and again, it will be, in, in these cases, it will be a case by case. It'll depend on how many spots are open for that subject, okay? And it will depend on what kind of other experiences you have. So I, I would recommend to apply anyway. And like I said, um, I can write my email. Is there any way that I can write on the chat? Um, yes, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. In it, it, it was in, in my presentation, but I am um, here. I'll write it on the chat. And we have a team, which includes myself, um, that will um, be able to help you with those questions. It's americas at exeter.ac.uk. 
So if you um, want me to chase this application or talk to the missions team about your application, I can do that for you. Okay, so um, yes, I recommend if you think you meet the 2-2, two -two, I would apply because there is a chance that you can get in. Okay, Hi, to ask. Thanks for this session. I would like to ask regarding the tuition fee waiver for an adjudicary scholarship. I'm interested in applying for the two years of Master of Science in Entrepreneurship and Innovation Management. This master has a fee of 24,000 per year. As part of the information provided, the adjudicary scholarship covers up to 15,000. So I was wondering whether the scholarship with cover the 24,000 for the master course. On the other hand, will the ajudar scholarship cover the fee for two years or is limited to just one year? Okay, so, all right, let me just go and, and make it very clear that the Ayudar scholarship is for the living allowance. So there's two things you have to think about when you go to abroad to study. How you're going to pay the tuition fee? So the tuition fee is twenty four thousand, right? But you also have your living expenses. So the ayudar is to help cover the the living expenses. Okay, it doesn't cover the tuition. So the tuition is cofuturo. So the cofuturo award will cover the tuition, and then the ayudar will complement cofuturo. Does that make things clear? And if it's for one or two years, yes, if it can be up to two years. So if you are chosen as a candidate and if your program is a two-year program, the IUDAR will cover the two years. Okay, I hope that answered the question. Belisario <laughs> asked if you have a scholarship from studying English. Um, yes, the global, the global Excellence Scholarship and the IUDAR Scholarship covers all our, our one or two year programs. So in, in any of the programs, um, you know, it can be English, it can be humanities, it could be medical, it, it can be, you know, uh, uh, the, the Global Excellence Scholarship has a list on, on um, if you go on our website and you type in Global Excellence Postgraduate, you will see the list of um, courses that it covers and colleges that, that it covers. There are some exceptions, like if you're, I think one of the medical courses is not covered by the Global Excellence Scholarship. But again, this is a competitive, you know, these are competitive scholarship where you have the right, if you have the, the offer from Exeter, you will have the right to apply to, but it will depend on, on whether you are awarded. Okay, Heido ask as a Judar scholarship holder, do I have to come back to Colombia after graduation or I can stay in the UK? You don't have to come back straight away. No, you can, you can, you can stay working in the UK, but I think, I think the, if you read the terms and conditions, I think you have three years to come back to Colombia. So you would be able, for example, to graduate, work two years in the UK, and then eventually you would need to come back to, to, to Colombia. But I think it's specified, it's specified in the terms and conditions. Sí, exactamente. Aquí quiero aclarar que para eh, acceder a todos los convenios de Colfuturo, ustedes tienen que ser seleccionados en la convocatoria del programa Crédito Beca, ser admitidos en la universidad. Una vez ustedes son seleccionados el 12 de mayo, nosotros enviamos una lista a las universidades con las personas que fueron seleccionadas y ellos toman la decisión de a quién le van a dar el, el beneficio. Si ustedes piensan postular en cual futuro, recuerden que eh, ustedes pueden condonar parcialmente su crédito y una de las condiciones para que sea condonable es graduarse del programa que cual futuro les financió, regresar a Colombia y permanecer durante tres años. Entonces, si quieres eh, pues condonar una parte de tu crédito, sí tendrías que volver. No tienen que volver inmediatamente. Con futuro les da hasta tres años para que ustedes se queden en el extranjero, trabajen y luego vuelvan a Colombia, que es lo que acaba de explicar sí. Adriana. Sí, gracias, Alejandra. Sí, yeah, so it, it, the same rule for the IUDAR is applied as Co-Futuro. So if Co-Futuro allows you to stay a bit longer, 
Um, you can stay a bit longer in the UK through our graduate route visa and work. And then you have to eventually um, go back to Colombia and, um, and, you know, start. I think, I don't know how it works exactly with Cofuturo, but you have to, 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 to follow the terms that Cofuturo has. Okay. Other question, if I did my undergraduate in the UK, do I still need to present a proof of my English proficiency? Um, it depends how long ago you did it. So we usually ask, it's actually not even the university, it's UK visas and immigration. That if you have a, a degree from an English speaking country, it doesn't have to just be just the UK. So if you have a degree from Australia or from the US, you, uh, it, and that degree happened um, not more than two years before your program starts, then you can use your degree to prove that you have um, English language. Mm -hmm. Laura Serna asks, hi, do you have any opportunity to improve the English level before we start the course? Also, which is the level that I need? Okay, so the level that you need is, we usually ask for an IELTS test um, and most of the programs is 6.5. Um, it, it will depend on the program. So it can range from 6.0 to set seven. Um, but so that's most programs are 6.5 overall on the IELTS. So that's the level that you need. And, you know, we have some opportunities to have a pre-sessional English, but um, I think that would come out of your own pocket. So I don't think that in, that's included on the Cofuturo, but there are options for pre-sessional English through our Intu Center. And if you would like more information about that, I can, I can, you can email me and I can send you more brochures to see if there's any option for you there. Juliet asks, hi, I would like to know when is the scholarship deadline? Um, well, the Cofuturo deadline is the 28th of February, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, for the Ayudar part, so that for the, you know, the complement to pay for your living allowances, we will contact you after we get the list from Kofuturo of who was awarded. Um, and then we will, there is no deadline really for the Ayudar. You just have to follow the interview process once you are invited. Okay, is there an environmental program such masters? Yes, there are. Um, there's lots of environmental programs. Um, we actually have, um, uh, Green Futures um, campaign, which is a focus on our master's courses and undergraduate courses on environmental um, environmental issues, tackling environment change. We have things like, you know, geology, environmental sciences, renewable energy. We have um, marine biology and thing and everything that you, you can imagine, business and env environment as well. We have some business courses that you can um, take like even law, we have environmental law as an option of, of um, you know, a, a way that you can focus. So yes, a lot of the environment and sustainability themes are embedded in our program. Okay. Does Ajudar scholarship cover relative expenses if you travel with them? Um, using the, the, the award for traveling, is that what what this person means i'm guessing yes. if that's if that's what you if you want to use the ayudara scholarship for travel i'm i'm not 100 percent sure of how um it would work i think you can use your your award however it will fit you i just need to think of a timeline of when you would receive you will receive your your award when you are a registered student when you when you start but you wouldn't receive it before Okay, so that's the problem. So obviously, you probably need to get here. So buy your flights with your own money. And then the, the, the money will start coming in once you are here, once you're a registered student. Okay, good morning. I'm interested in participating for a master's degree in law. I took the IELTS exam a couple of years ago, but I, it expired on December 2021. Will I apply to the master or I have to take the exam again? You would probably, you would need, unfortunately, you would need to, to, to um, take the exam again, um, not just because it, it expired recently, but because we look at the date 
of expiration compared to when you start your program, not when you apply for the program. So if you're starting in September 22, you would be, your, your um, IELTS will be almost a year old. So you would have to take a new one, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, where can I apply directly? I have all my documents on fail to apply. You can apply on our website. So you, depending on the program that you would like to apply, um, you go to the program page where it has the description and the entry requirements of the program. And then there should be a little box on the top right that says apply now. And then you select, you know, September, 2022, and then you, you just follow the instructions. You have to probably uh, register, you know, with a username and create a password. And then you just follow the instructions for the form. There is no fee for applying. There's, we don't charge for applications. Okay. It is possible to receive a get answer for preparing a motivation letter focusing in the field of study specifically. I can get in touch with the school before I being accepted. For example, I'm interested in the translation studies, Master of Arts. Yeah, you can get in touch with me if you have specific, I mean, I won't be able to, you know, write the details of your, your personal statement. Um, you know, I, I can help with, I'll, I'll try to help with what I can, but just to quickly, you know, um, explain that for a master's personal statement for Exeter, okay, for our, because each university have slightly different guidelines, but overall, you break it down into three different parts. So the first part, I call it the start. Like, what was that moment in your life that you realized that you wanted to, to focus on this area? You know, what motivated you to apply for this degree? And, and the second part is how can you contribute to the classroom? What are your experiences and what are, is transferable for you to apply for, you know, in the classroom with, with, when you're talking to other students? And make, you know, it's a personal statement because they want to hear where you're coming from and what your skills are and what you can contribute to the class. And then the last part, you just say, why do you want to study in the UK? And what do you want to do with your degree afterwards? What are your motivations for the future? So I basically, you know, break it down that way with my personal statement. But yes, you can email the Americas email and I'll, and I'll try to help you with what I can. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Please write Kimberly, the link. Yes, Kimberly asks, could you please write the link for the page for applying? And if uh, I need to have experience in the field of the master chosen. Um, okay, Alejandro, do I have one minute to share my screen? Yes, of course. Okay, hold on. Let me just um, pull up the page and then maybe I can just show everybody how you would apply, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me just go here to... Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, so basically, um, the way you apply, you go to, you know, master's degree, okay? Most of you will probably be applying for a master's course. And then let's say I want to do a master's in, let's see, <clears throat> mining engineering. And then there is different types of courses. And I wanna do just mining process. Okay, so basically you go over here and then there's a button there, <coughs> apply for September 22 entry. So you click on that and it takes you straight to the portal where you would create your username and password. I already have mine, I'm not gonna go in. And then basically you have to register and create a login for you to be able to come back and have a password and log in, and then you just follow the instructions. That's all you have to do to apply for a master's degree. Now, for a PhD or a, a master's of research, it's a little bit different. Let me try to find the, the um, go back here, go back to the main page. So study, and then PhD, okay, how to apply. And then there is very specific instructions 
I have very good videos that instruct you on what you have to do regarding your research proposal and um, you know before you apply what you have to do and then a step-by-step -step on what you need to do in order to apply for a PhD or, or research degree at Exeter. Okay, I hope that was helpful. And let me know in the chat. <laughs> okay, we have the last question um, for time. For Maria Alejandra, it is possible to apply even through if I just graduate and I don't have experience? Absolutely, yes. You, you can you don't you don't have to have um, experience in the area or experience at all to do a master's in the UK. The master's in the UK, you know, sometimes if you have if you can justify it, you can study something completely different than you've done. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be what you've done in the past what you do have to make sure is that you meet the entry criteria so if you have the equivalent of 2-1 and you can justify in your personal statement like i explained before what is your motivation to studying this course and then if it is completely different or slightly different from what you studied in the past what changed what happened that made you change the the route of your career and that's basically what we want to know Ok. Adriana, muchísimas gracias por tu tiempo, por toda la información. Creo que no todo problem. quedó muy claro. Okay, en los próximos great. días vamos a estar enviando eh, la grabación a sus correos para que todos tengan la, el, el video de este webinar. Y adicionalmente también va a estar en nuestro canal de YouTube. Entonces, muchas okay. gracias, Adriana. Muchas gracias y espero que... Mi español es terrible. Uh, espero que tengas disfrutado y pueda usar esta, estas informaciones de la mejor manera. Y um, nuevamente, mi email es Américas, como la, 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 la América del Sur, del Norte, de las Américas, at exeter.ac.uk. Ok. Y me Perfecto. llamo Adriana. Okay. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Un abrazo gracias. grande a Colombia. Adiós. <laughs> chao, chao. <laughs>